Hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs uh, Asian Art and Antiques located here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. In this video, we've put together about 70 images of uh, monochrome examples, uh, single color pieces. There's some have a, a, little, a few other colors added in, but they're typically all monochromes, uh, dating from the early 19th to the end of the Qing Dynasty. And this is a very heavily collected category. It's an interesting one because a lot of items were made during the 19th century uh, that were brought back from earlier designs and colors and shapes uh, from the uh, Qinlung period and, and even the Ming Dynasty and the Song Dynasty with some of the crackleware's. So we're going to get started. This is the first uh, piece. This is a really fine Guangxu uh, period tea dust glaze vase. Tea dust glazes come in a wide range of colors from deep, deep forest green to browns to these colors. They have various names, eel skin and that sort of thing. And this is a well-known example. And if you flip it over, this is the rain mark on it. Notice how they carefully uh, glaze the area where the mark is going to sit in the square panel on the bottom. Pretty typical of these. This particular vase came from the collection of the Vanini uh, founder in, in Italy, the Vanini Glass Company, Paolo Vanini. We sold it a few years ago. Here's another example. This one I liked very much. It's a 19th century who formed tea dust vase. Uh, again, with a different, slightly different color, a nice brown lip, uh, brown dressing. And uh, here's the foot rim to it. That's what it should look like. Uh, notice the little gaps where the glaze pulled uh, slightly at the foot. Beautifully done, though. And um, when you flip this over, you get a rain mark on the bottom um, in brown, uh, in brown reserve. And uh, we tried to figure this mark out. It looks a little Chin Lung. It looks a little Jai Jing. Uh, it's a 19th century vase, and I, I, I think the mark just got fouled up. But anyway, here's a, it was a beautiful piece. Here's a Guangxu uh, Kong vase with the well-known trigram pattern. It was done in sort of a soft celadon blue. This came out of a house in, in New Hampshire. The dealer found it in an attic and brought it to us. And here's the bottom of this, and it's how it should look. Notice the foot, the characteristics of the paste, and the beautifully done uh, rain mark on the bottom. Uh, this was a nice, nice example. And here we have uh, another vase. Uh, these are often called arrow vases, and uh, has a peach uh, uh, pattern uh, relief work center on it. And uh, unfortunately, somebody had lamped this. It was a lamp, but I, I found it in an antique shop locally a few years ago. And uh, they drilled right through the mark, sadly. They shouldn't have done that, but they do. Um, there was a lamp shortage back in the 20s when, they, when people wanted nice lamps. And they took a lot of Chinese jars and lamped them. So you expect to see those. Here is a carved lotus form pl flower plate uh, done in the early 19th century, possibly the late 18th century. But beautifully done, beautifully carved lovely detail uh, and excellent even color but this is a very nicely done plate and the bottom of this plate has a very you'll see it in a second here it comes is a very nice uh, little slight brown dressing on the foot and it has a Ming mark John D mark on the bottom it's not John D obviously but it's it, like I said it's probably a late 18th or early 19th century piece but very nicely done and here you have a celadon, a uh, catagon, uh, or they also known as puzzle pots. Uh, this one is done, as you can see, with an underglaze red and blue, um, and it's a peach form pot. And there's the bottom of it. They often, a lot of dealers think these are always 18th century. I, I don't agree with that. Uh, it's just my opinion. There's the hole in the bottom, and note, notice the little vent hole on the handle put in while it was being fired. And then you have lamps like these. This was a spectacularly pretty large pair of uh, cobalt glazed uh, reticulated uh, lanterns. Uh, this is a really lovely pair and uh, made around the middle part of the 19th century. And if you lift the lantern off its stand, that's what you see. You see this unglazed bottom. A little bit of blue glaze uh, got stuck there uh, uh, around the, uh, the foot. And then there's this. This is a late, mid-late closer to late 19th century uh, cobalt blue underglazed blue vase. Beautifully done. Beautiful color. This thing glowed. It was a wonderful color. Nice loop handles. And this is what the bottom of it looks like. Um, nicely done. Very neat. Nicely finished foot. Good white paste. Recessed and fully glazed. It's a very nice example. 
Now you have this. This is an early 19th century shell form ink inkwell with a, a nice deep cobalt blue. They made a lot of these. These were fairly popular uh, for people that uh, did calligraphy at home. And uh, this is what the bottoms of uh, these look like. The one on the left is the blue example. The one on the right was a green one that we had that was actually an animal sitting on top of it. I couldn't find the, the, the whole thing, so that's all you're going to get to see of that. But that's what the bases look like. And here is a rather simple and very elegant uh, squat uh, Guangxu mark and period vase done in a very lovely green, nice soft uh, underglazed glue green. And on the bottom, it also has a Guangxu mark. Notice how nicely the foot is finished and how evenly and how the, the glaze stops and thickens just above the foot. Very typical. This was a beautiful piece. And here is a, a, a bladder form vase done in uh, a nice egg yolk yellow. Uh, a very, very uh, lovely example. Notice the uh, thickening of the glaze toward the foot turns deep amber. Here's a detailed shot of it. There's a nice crackle on the body. Uh, there was some debate about this. Some folks thought this was an 18th century piece. I happen to think it's a 19th century piece. Uh, but a beautiful example, probably early 19th. And then you have this early, nice early to mid 19th century uh, relief work tile. Very delicately done. The uh, willow trees in this were done in full 3D. Um, they were beautifully modeled. And here's a detail of it up nice and close. Uh, notice the rocks, the way they're so carefully sculpted and shaped with the figures very three-dimensionally uh, rendered on the, on the patio and on the, on the walkway with the railing. And this was a, a very, very fine uh, robin's egg blue uh, miniature vase we had a while ago. It was about three or four inches tall, um, po possibly late 18th, early 19th century, maybe Chai Ching period, but excellent quality. Um, and uh, this was, uh, here's a shot of the foot. We sold this to a very well-known uh, dealer in Hong Kong. Uh, but nicely shaped foot, very carefully done uh, glaze, and just great color. And that's what you look for in Robin's Egg Blue. It's got the light to dark blue on that. And here's a, another Robin's Egg example. This is a mid to late 19th century lotus form pot. With more, with, with less variation in color, but a good even color, and very nicely potted with that delicate little spout. And here's the foot rim on that. Nice white paste. Just a little bit of wear there. There's a couple of scratches on the on the glaze from something. I don't know what, but the bottom is beautifully glazed as well. It's a good example. And here's a robin's egg version of one of those uh, shell form ink stands. There are staple repairs in this. Somebody must have loved this because they actually went to the trouble of staple repairing it. Um, you see it there on the lower right. And here is a very soft robin's egg to light, light bluish gray uh, crackle vase, late 19th century. Uh, pretty typical of the period. This one was probably about, as I recall, seven inches tall. And there is, when you see these, uh, these sort of bronzed looking um, recessed uh, seal marks on the bases, you always know that they were done after the 1870s or 80s and into the 19th century. And here you have a uh, nice little uh, robin's egg blue uh, ink pot with the chimera climbing up over the side. This was also a very popular form and you're likely to find them out there. And uh, here's the bottom of this. Um, you know, again, early to mid, yeah, mid 19th, late 19th century. They're hard to date because they were made in provincial areas and they made them in large quantities. Coming up is a uh, square one, very similarly done with a little more fluid looking robin's egg blue. It's sort of swirling around there, almost with a marbleized effect. And the uh, notice that the uh, chimera has an uh, uh, iron red uh, decoration as well. And here's the bottom of that. Again, the foot is the foot paste is very similar to the previous example, and uh, again, very marbleized. You can see how the artist drew the the colors in toward the center as he was coloring this piece. Beautifully done. And here's another one of those vases with the uh, arrow handles. And again, this time it also has the peach thing on the front. It's a late, uh, early to mid 19th century Lang Yao uh, piece. Some crackle in it. A little little irregular. Here's the bottom of it. It's an older foot than the previous one that was Gong Shu, but uh, very similar form. Um, nicely finished, and you can see the knife cuts in the foot, how they trimmed it. And the bases of these are often glazed white. 
Here's a speckled sort of flambe glazed little bottle vase. These are, these, this form is generally, they're quite small when, when they have those very compressed bodies. Uh, this was about five or six inches tall. And when you turn this over, that's the bottom that you see. Very typical, again, 19th century foot. And notice that the, the base is glazed, recessed, and done sort of an off-white color, which is quite typical of these. And here's another example. Uh, this is a more Lang Yao, not Flambe, almost identical in shape to the previous one. This had a beautiful color to it, though. The, the red, this blood red, was just really glowed. And here's the bottom of this. It does bear a Kang Shi mark, and you can see that there was a little misfiring there on the bottom. The, uh, the mark got obscured. It's not Kang Shi. It's a 19th century piece, and they just used that mark. But a very good example. And there's a nice view of the mouth. Notice how the red pulled back and exposed the uh, slight celadon color underneath and the celadon crackle inside the mouth with that uh, deep, uh, deep red, almost black dressing. And here's a slightly flambéed, uh, three-footed uh, planter. Uh, these were made, and also a lot of them are made in cobalt blue. Uh, very typical planter of the mid-late 19th century. They're about eight inches wide, and here's the bottom. You can see, you can see the turnings. Also, if you look on the bottom of this, you'll see that there's some rather thick droplets, especially on the lower right. And this is where the glaze went a bit thick and uh, pooled up and started to hang down. And on the inside of this, you can see uh, how they glazed it. There's a crackle with this white paste that sort of pooled around. It's not very neatly done. And a bit of the uh, blue that was used when they did some of the flambe work dripped over as well. Now here you have four Lang Yao ink pots. These are all from the 19th century in different shapes. Now you have a six-sided one, a round beehive form one, sort of a uh, flared vase type one. Near the bottoms of these, they're very typical, what you want to see on a 19th century pot. These are also highly collected. People love scholar's objects. And the foot has a little iron oxide there, and there's a foot of another one. This is a slightly later 19th century piece, judging by the color of that and shape of that foot. Uh, quite typical, and often these are crackled, and there's traces of red under here, and often they're not. This was a very good uh, early 19th century crackle-glazed uh, vase uh, we, we had. Uh, this came from an auction in Connecticut years ago, and it's got lion ring mask handles on the ends. But very lovely uh, ghee type crackle to it. And this was a big vase. This vase was around 13 inches tall. Uh, and there's a good view of the, uh, of the mask on the sides. Thickly, thickly glazed. And when you flip it over, this is the bottom of it and what the foot looks like. It had a tag on it, a very old tag and a collector's tag. And it said it was Chin Lung. It wasn't Chin Lung. Uh, but it was a, absolutely an early 19th century piece. And there's what the bottom of it looked like. And here's a late 19th century crackle piece with the uh, relief work done in this sort of uh, dressing, uh, dressing on the biscuit uh, that looks like bronze inlay. This was a popular technique during the 19th century. And uh, here's the bottom of that. Again, this was lamped and they drilled right through that, uh, that uh, bronzed looking uh, mark on the bottom. But very typical foot of that period, 1880s to 1900. And here's a nice little 19th century crackle glazed ink pot. We're getting into the crackle glazes here, as you can see. It's a nice example. It's got a brown dressing around the mouth and a, a two-color crackle, a little tan lines and black lines. Crackle was created by, uh, they would uh, rub the piece down as it cooled with black ink, and it would soak into the cracks. And that's how they got this effect. Often you'll see the ink on the foot. And here's a crackle type uh, plate. Uh, they made lots of these. They made them right through into the 20th century, actually. And this is a, a dish uh, that you're likely to come across out there. They're not terribly valuable. A few dealers always try to sell them as much older than they are, but they're not. And you can see that this is the typical back of these. They have these little brown sort of spur marks on there. A nicely done foot. And uh, again, these are very, col very much collected. And here's a uh, ink stand. Uh, it's a three-well ink stand done like little mountains with a, a crackle glaze on it, nicely potted. Uh, very, very uh, familiar form to many of you, I'm sure. Here's the bottom of it. It's flat, unglazed, slight traces of iron oxide around the, uh, around the edges of the foot where it meets the glaze. Pretty typical little example, and uh, nicely done. 
And here, this is these are fun. This is an elephant form uh, water dropper. You can see with a fill hole on the top, and you would drip the water out the front uh, to mix your ink out of the uh, out of the tip of the trunk. Um, the Chinese always did interesting things when when displaying elephants. Uh, sort of interpreted designs. Um, and there's the bottom of the feet were unglazed, and and there's an old tag uh, tag uh, residue on there. I should have cleaned it off. And here's a, a grouping of uh, uh, monochromes, except for the little water dropper shishi on the left. But there's a three-legged toad on the lower right. There's a melon form one, the mountain brush rust, and the uh, ghee form pot. And here's a 19th century crackleware uh, tea jar with a sort of a soft yellow uh, tone to it. And a, and sort of a nice even glaze. Uh, rather well done. And the bottom of this one uh, is like this. You can see the turnings in the center. It's unglazed, which is often the case with these later pieces. Um, nicely done foot. Very neatly uh, uh, finished where the glaze stops. And then you have this. It's an early 19th century incense burner. Um, it's sort of like Blanc de Chine, but it really isn't Blanc de Chine. This is actually white porcelain, white glazed porcelain. It's a little different. It wasn't made in, in Dewa. Probably made in Qing de Chen. And here's an image of the bottom, uh, unglazed uh, base on this. I think there's a better picture of the foot coming up. But you can see where the glaze literally goes right up over onto the, onto the bottom of the foot. There it is. And then the uh, base looks like that. You can see some a few chatter marks from the turning on the lower portion of the bottom there. And uh, there's a firing flaw in the center. You have a little gap. Uh, that's not a crack from damage. It's just uh, the way they did it. And then you have this, this is the last piece. This is a Blanc de Chine, um, early 19th century rhino horn uh, form libation cup with animals and clouds. It has a slight crackle to it. And the bottom of it uh, looks very typical of the, of the uh, period. There's a, there is a hairline in the bottom of it. They somehow got a red stain on it. It might have been some sort of ink at one point. And there's the foot. The bottoms of these are often irregularly finished. So you have to be prepared to see that. And that's it for these, okay? These are just some of the things we've had over the last 35 or 40 years. And I hope you found this useful. And if you're not getting our weekly newsletter, which covers the uh, things that are actively being listed on eBay that we happen to like each week, uh, sign up for it at our site, bitamount.com. Um, and you can get the newsletter. It's completely free. We do it for fun. But a lot of people get it. About 8,000 do so far. And uh, thanks so much for spending some time with us. And check our other videos on different types of porcelain from China. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.